Hello, I'm Tom Mintier. Space Shuttle Columbia sits on pad 39 at the Kennedy Space Center, waiting, waiting for the clouds to open up. The situation right now is that they do not have a go on the ceiling. They are only getting about 7,500 feet, and they ran into about 1,000 feet of cloud cover uh, over the landing site area that they would have to use in the case of an emergency. They have put an observer in a helicopter and he is flying up and down through that area, the last 500 feet they need for approval for launch. So they are at T9 right now and they are holding and are going to stay held at T minus nine minutes until they clear up the situation. We'll be back and continue to update you on the situation. This has been a CNN special report. This is a CNN special report. Hello, I'm Tom Mintier. The clock is ticking now at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The weather has improved. All technical situations have been cleared. <clears throat> the weather situation was that they needed 8,000 feet of ceiling before they would launch. That has been accomplished just barely. There is a helicopter with an observer flying at 8,000 feet, keeping their eye on the ground. There is now about three minutes left to go in the countdown. We're going to take a short break, and then we'll have the launch of Columbia and Astro, a long-awaited mission, in just a moment. Main engine gimbal profile complete. Standing by. Well, as you can see, the gaseous oxygen vent hood is being removed, a good indication that uh, Columbia is very close to launch. A little over two minutes left in the count right now. Again, they cleared the weather problem out uh, just a few moments ago and decided to start the clocks. Uh, while they did have optical uh, clearance from the ground for the 8,000 feet, they wanted to put a helicopter observer up. The range safety officer said that unless they could see through the cloud cover at 8,000 feet down to the ground, that he would not allow Columbia to be launched. There was extensive discussion going on about that situation, something we never heard before as far as uh, a criteria of having an observer, but when it is this close, when they are talking about a difference of 500 feet in the cloud cover, uh, most of those uh, mission managers wanted to go, but the range safety officer said if he couldn't see the shuttle, that it was a no-go situation. That cleared up uh, about five or six minutes ago. They started the countdown clock. They have started the auxiliary power units, and they are about ready to make a fifth attempt at launching Columbia, the fifth try since last May. Uh, Three of the four previous tries were stopped because of the hydrogen leak problem. Uh, no problem with that system tonight. They did have a problem with helium, but uh, that was cleared up. They found out that it was a ground-based problem and not a problem inside the orbiter itself. on the joints of the solid rocket boosters have been turned off. T minus 40 seconds. The flight data recorders are on. Coming up on a go from the ground launch sequencer. T minus 31, we have a go. Auto sequence start. So the handoff has now occurred from the ground launch sequencer to the space shuttle. Columbia's computer is now controlling. Booster hydraulic power units have started. T minus 16 seconds. Sound suppression water system is armed. 12, 11, 10. Go for main engine start. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3 good engines. 3 good engines up and burning. 2, 1, Zero and liftoff, liftoff of the space shuttle Columbia and Astro One for an insight into the lifestyle of the galaxies. Roll program. Roll program. Roger, roll, Columbia. This is Mission Control Houston now controlling as Columbia ascends through 1,400 feet. Good roll confirmed here on the ground. Three good main engines, three good auxiliary power units, and three good fuel cells. Columbia now at uh, 6,100 feet. Three main engines are now throttling down to ease Columbia's passage through the period of maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle. Now at 18,000 feet. Relative velocity now 1,100 feet per second. Three main engines now throttling back up, and we show them now at 
Columbia, go at throttle up. Roger, go at throttle up. Go at throttle up, and now uh, Columbia at 67,000 feet, downrange 8 nautical miles, relative velocity 2,500 feet per second. Now passing through 100,000 feet, downrange 16 nautical miles now, relative velocity 3,600 feet per second. Standing by for SRB SEP call. And good uh, SRB separation confirmed here in the control center. So the solid three rocket engines. boosters have separated from Columbia. Columbia now on its three main engines. A, a beautiful launch uh, turning uh, night into day at the uh, Cape. Columbia and uh, the spectacular launch uh, is the only way you miles. can uh, talk about Columbia a night launch. They are infrequent. And uh, CNN's John Zarella joins us uh, now from the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, John, uh, it was looked like that uh, it wasn't going to happen because of something we've never heard before, that uh, an helicopter observer had to be put up to clear the last 500 feet. That was very, very strange. I was trying to figure that out all along, and uh, the, the most I got out of it was that they were concerned that they wanted to be able to see the stack as it got through 8,000 feet. And I'm sure the viewers could see why when they saw that picture. As it did break through the cloud cover, there were periods where you couldn't get a good look at the shuttle, at least from here, from uh, our observation, looking up at it. It was difficult. And that's, of course, in case there is a problem, in case there is an emergency, they want to be able to see the stack, the, which is basically the, uh, the shuttle, the, uh, the orbiter, the external tank, and the solid rocket boosters all performing together and that there are no problems. So, but that was very rare. Uh, usually we're used to hearing the shuttle training aircraft up, giving them clearances, checking weather, and we saw the helicopter flying over and taking off looking at the cloud deck, but very, very interesting conversations and certainly strange, but uh, it turned out to be a spectacular liftoff. It's been uh, almost a year since uh, Columbia last flew last January, and as we all remember, it was last May when this mission was supposed to get off the ground so it has been a long overdue flight and finally NASA has been able to get Columbia off the ground Tom all right they are at negative return now so uh, Columbia's 10-day mission with the largest crew since Challenger in a mission that has been on the boards and on the books since 1986 was the original target date for launch the pad is empty at the Kennedy Space Center and the Columbia mission a 10-day mission is on its way. We, of course, will have continuing live coverage throughout this 10-day Astro mission, a mission to study the ultraviolet, what we can't see from Earth, even from Earth's telescopes. We'll be back throughout the 10 days to keep you up-to-date continuously. I'm Tom Intier.